Dave. Shut up, Dave. Let's go. So, hi, I'm David Zimmerman. Um, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. And I am excited to do the SEO workshop for you because I'm such a nerd that I was talking about this last night between karaoke songs. Um, so, we're going to just talk uh, in, in two hours. You're going to guarantee your ranking at number one on Google. Um, so, congratulations. You're all about to become millionaires. Uh, just remember me, all I ask is 1%. Now, we, whenever we talk about SEO, there's one thing we really have to start with, and that's just, just basic definitions. It's so funny how many people on their LinkedIn profile say SEO. Um, you know, thank God we're at a WordPress conference because every CMS says they're SEO friendly, and sometimes that means we really have to deep dive because sometimes it's not. We have to hack it to make it SEO friendly. WordPress, however, out of the box, does so many things right. It's really built in a Google friendly way. So there's a lot of technical things we don't have to worry about thanks to WordPress. But because there's so many things going on with throwing this, this phrase around, we have to ask ourselves, well, what is SEO? And the simple definition is SEO is about being found by your customers in the search engines. If your customers can find you when they go to the search engines, we've done SEO. That, that sounds great, but we, we kind of have to get a little negative here. We're going to through, go through a few things that SEO is not. Um, for instance, SEO is not all web marketing. Every once in a while, I have a very well-meaning client come to me and say, hey, David, we just did a new email template. Will you SEO it for us? <laughs> no. No, because SEO is not all web marketing. Like, if you need help on your email template, let's talk about that. Like, let's work on that. But, but you, SEO is a different marketing channel than email, right? You know, uh, Facebook and, and social media, they're great marketing channels, but, but it's, it's not SEO. There may be even a great relationship between the two. But let's not use the word SEO to mean all ways to market yourself online. This is a very specific way of marketing your business online, which is getting found by your customers who are looking for you in the search engines. In fact, we need to make a distinction, too, between paid search and organic search. Right here, we're talking about just the idea of building your website and if building it out in such a way where Google can read it, understand what it's about, and serve it to your customers who are looking for you. There is another marketing channel called paid search, or it used to be called AdWords, now it's Google Ads. That's different. We're not going to be talking about that. Um, honestly, Google makes a ton of money when people get frustrated with organic search and just say, oh, heck with it, I'm just going to give Google money, surely that's going to work. That's how Google makes most of their money. Um, don't rent your traffic. Don't, it, 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 paid search can work really well, don't get me wrong, but we're not going to be talking about that today. We're going to talk about investing in your site, in your business, in the long term so that your customers can find you. But SEO is not all web marketing. SEO is also not about tricking Google, right? Sometimes people say, well, you know, David, you and your, your specific insight into the algorithm and the secrets that you found, I don't have any secrets. Like, and if anybody tells you they do, either they're lying or it'll only last a little bit, right? Google does not want people to cheat on this. Let's not try to think that we can outsmart Google as our starting point to doing SEO. Like, everybody's talking about chat GPT and SEO, you know, that's great. The whole problem with that is just the idea, the fundamental idea that we're going to trick Google for a little bit, and then once Google can fully detect chat GPT, well, then we're starting over. Rather than try to trick Google, I'm recommending that you actually like do marketing, like invest in your site, in your business, talk to your customers in a way that's helpful to them. Like, isn't that feel better? Like, if you're providing SEO as a service, wouldn't you be more proud to deliver that to a client than, hey, this trick works for a couple weeks? And then we're banned from Google, and we're starting over with a completely new website. That is some people's SEO model. So just know, we, we really don't want, if you're looking for the tricks, 
you can leave because I'm not going to give them to you. You'll be very disappointed. The next thing we want to talk about is that SEO isn't really for everyone. If SEO is about being found by your customers in Google, the first assumption is your customers are looking for you on Google, right? If you're first to market in that you've developed such an amazingly innovative product that people don't yet know to look for it, SEO isn't your play. It only can respond to demand in the market. If you need to create demand because you're the first one there, congratulations, that's amazing, but SEO isn't your marketing channel. And you need to look into other demand generating marketing channels so that people know to look for you. And then we talk about SEO, right? Actually, the second half of our talk today is answering the question, is SEO for you? We're going to do a little part of working through to make sure before you do anything with SEO that you know people are looking for you, right? And last, SEO is not a set it and forget it kind of thing. It's not the rotisserie, Showtime rotisserie chicken, right? A lot of web developers, well-meaning, really good web developers say, I've SEO'd your site. They can set you up for success. And they can do all the right things to help Google find you and even to read your site. Good. But SEO is an ongoing campaign if done right. It, it, Google loves fresh content. The algorithm is constantly changing. Like, we want to keep up with the things and as data shows us what to do. So don't think, hey, just SEO this for me and you're done. We need to keep an ongoing part of an SEO process. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. So this is SEO, four parts. Step one, we're going to measure. You know, that's the value of doing any marketing online is frankly that we know it works. We're not buying a billboard up on the interstate hoping someone sees it. And of all the people who see it, maybe someone calls the number. And all the people who call that number, maybe we get a business out of that, right? No, the value of on, all online marketing is that we know this many people found us. And of those, this many people contacted us. And if you're really good, you know how much money you made from that, right? That's what makes online marketing, including SEO, such a great way to market your business. You know exactly what it accomplished. So don't begin any online marketing unless you can measure it, right? Don't measure it. I will also say don't measure by rank. Rank doesn't really exist. And, and any SEO who says, we've done SEO, you rank number one, they're telling you half a story. First of all, rankings aren't objective. They're based on my personal search history and your personal search history. They're based on where I am and where you are. They're based on, sometimes Google just tests stuff out. I wonder what this page will do if it ranks here versus that. So every time you go to Google, even incognito mode, which the Google engineers laugh that people actually believe, it still is not an accurate representation of where you're showing up. So if you're measuring your success by rank, you're really not measuring much. So don't oversimplify to rank. We want to know, did people find us? And when they found us, did they contact us? And then, then did we make money? That's how you measure online marketing. So we're going to talk about measurement today. There's something called technical SEO, right? Which is the idea of when someone finds your website, does Google have the ability to read and understand the content on your website? Can it crawl? Can it find all the pages? Does it have any trouble understanding some of the stuff? There's a whole aspect of technical SEO. Now, WordPress is really good at this. We're just really grateful for the hard work that the team has been putting into this. But there are certain little weird things we've got to watch out for. And so we just keep an eye on those things. And we might talk a little bit about that today. We want to talk a lot about it because WordPress. Next part's content. I know your designer loves big, beautiful, 
images on your page. Oh, and they're gorgeous. That 10 gigabyte photo in 300, oh my, wow, it's just, bull. Oh, ain't nobody you got time for that, right? Ultimately, you have to have words on the page. You have a picture of a lawnmower on your page. Google doesn't, even if Google can identify that that's a lawnmower, Google doesn't know why there's a lawnmower on your page. Is the lawnmower on your page because you're selling lawnmowers? Or because you mow lawns? Or because you repair lawnmowers? Or because you have a class action lawsuit because a lawnmower company? Like, like, what does the picture mean? You have to have words on the page for Google to understand it. But even if we're not doing SEO, human beings like words on the page. It reassure, reassures them they are where they thought they would be. They see a lawnmower, they land on the page. Is that really what, do they really do lawnmower repair? Or are they showcasing their beautiful lawnmower collection? I don't know. We've got to have words to clarify that. But for SEO, words are particularly important. We will talk about that a lot today. And last, links. Uh, go on forever about links, but just the gist of it is there's a lot of websites that have a lot of the same ideas that are on your website but are also on their website. So if there's two pages about lawnmower repair services in Birmingham, there's probably more than that, which one's best? Well, Google doesn't necessarily just use the content on the page to determine that. It wants to know, does anybody else think that this website is the best lawnmower repair place in Birmingham? That's what got, Google uses links to determine. Do other websites think you are the expert in your space? This, this could be a whole other talk that would last six hours if we did it. But just once you know that that's important, and as with everything, and I'd say even especially with links, we don't want to cut corners with that, right? We're not trying to trick Google. We just want to think like a PR professional to see the other people linked to our site. But if we do these four things over and over and over again, we're doing SEO. And so we're going to kind of break this down today because really I don't want to talk. Well, I, I, I really do want to talk for two hours. I, I don't think you want me to talk for two hours. So what we're going to do is going to break this down into, into one part, two parts. <laughs> The first number one is we're going to talk about analytics. And so the first half of our talk today, we're going to talk about how do we know whether your SEO campaign's working. But the best part of the first half, whether you do SEO or not, you will know whether your other marketing campaigns are working, right? So. That's what's really cool about this first part. We're going, to just, we're going to help you set up analytics on your site so that you can know if any of your marketing is working. Right? That's the whole value of online marketing. Does it actually help you? We're going to know that. Right? Now, the second number one, we're going to talk about something called keyword research. Pardon me. Keyword research is the art, Jamie, art. Of, <laughs> of determining how our customers might be looking for us online. Okay, um, We're going to talk together, and we're actually going to do some research together on your businesses to determine if people are looking for what you have to offer. And if they are, what words and phrases are they using? Okay, And so by the end of our workshop today, we will have covered analytics, which deals with the measurements, but also helps us with the technical. One of the most underused parts of analytics is it can help us keep track of errors on our website. In case something goes wrong, we can use our analytics to help determine that. And so that's, we're going to cover the first two parts of SEO. And then second, number one, we're going to do keyword research, which is going to talk about content for a website, but it also inform how we might promote our website on other websites to get those links. So that's how we're going to do this today. And I'm 
we're gonna, let's get started. So um, let's talk about the first number one, so <coughs> analytics. I am a huge proponent of Google Analytics. Um, right now, uh, we're on GA4, Google Analytics 4. Uh, if you have an older version of Analytics, it will go away in July. So um, we want to set up analytics on your site. I, I, I don't want to put a, I don't want to walk you through how to set up a plugin on your site. I, I feel like you can do that. Um, like, if you don't, that, that's okay. If you're that new, hey, please, there's no shame in it. The wonderful WordPress community, there are people who will help you. But we're not going to talk about installing a plugin in your site. I recommend the Google Site Kit plugin for several reasons. Um, number one, it makes it super easy to install Google Analytics. Okay? Um, also, with it, you can install other analytics packages that are super, super helpful, such as Google Search Console, which is a data source telling you, hey, this is what Google thinks about your website. I think that's a pretty important piece of data to have when doing SEO. You know, there are expensive tools who like to sell you the amazing products. Why, when, when you can get it straight from the source? <laughs> um, so using SiteKit plugin will allow you to see Search Console, Google Analytics. If you want to get more advanced, uh, you can get into uh, PageSpeed Insights, which is a really wonderful tool for technical SEO, and Google Tag Manager, but that's a little more advanced. We're not going to talk about that today. But now is when I would like you all to turn to the people at your table. This is a workshop, not a lecture. So if you're at a table by yourself, Catherine, I need you, or there's only two of you, I would encourage you to move to some of these other friendly people. And, and let's see if we can get some groups together. And here's the first thing I want you to do. I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you five to ten minutes, and I want you to go around your circle, and I want you to say, hi, my name is, and I'm a wordpress -a holic No, uh, hi, my name is, uh-oh, and I, I want you to tell everybody, what do you want your website visitors to accomplish? Okay? All right, so break. Go sit at a table with friendly people. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm not playing. Go sit at people at the table. And I want, you, you, by yourself, you can't do this by yourself. This is a community here. And so introduce yourself to your new marketing colleagues and then tell them what you want to accomplish through your website. And remember, we only have five to ten minutes. So we will we'll, we'll break in again and I can get some a drink. Or I'm going to turn off my mic for the record. Okay. Are you still in Atlanta? No, I don't Is this my, am I on? Yes. Yes, I am. So when you have gone around your circle, and tell everybody your name and what you want to accomplish from your website. Someone at your table, please just raise your hand. Welcome. You can just saddle up to a table and meet your new friends.
Awesome, Paul's done first. You win. Oh, you're two? Okay. All right. Did you contribute? Do you have a website? I said. He's taking all the notes. Oh, okay. That's, that's important. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll allow it. Come on in, have a seat at a table, and now you've met your new marketing team. All right. When you're done, just raise your hand so you know your table. Your your table. You've already you've already volunteered. You got a gold star already. Is it? I'm oh, okay. I'm already. I'm over here yammering. Good. <laughs> she knows all this stuff already. Right. Yeah. Um, the, the nerds in my life tell me keep plugins for them. Yeah. So why put a Google Site Kit plugin on your website instead of just going to Google and looking up your analytics there? Um, I'm trying to build, write this to be very broadly right. applied, right? right. Like, it, I do, I, even though I can go, like, you don't want to be messing around, I don't want to be messing around with themes and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. You, oftentimes when the theme updates, it'll overwrite that, and you'll yes. lose your code. And you'll break it. So, or your client will break it. Or your client will break it. Know it. Right. So, just from a panacea, if I'm applying this to a whole bunch of different people, using the plugin is probably the best solution. Okay. Sometimes, it's, you know, if, if I were to do I would use Tag Manager and hard code that in. That's what I do. Yeah, and then use, and, but we're not going to, that's a little too advanced for what we're going to do today. All right, uh, we're going to tie this up. So anybody else done at your table? Raise your hand so I know. Thank you. All right, great, 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 great. Okay, so I'll give you a minute left. Oh, I'm, I'm still mic'd and I'm popping. That's hard for the... 
Your accent is much more heavy Carolina than it is Kansas. I've lived in the South since I graduated from KU. Oh, okay. That's in 95, okay. so I, I'm a little insulted by that, actually. <laughs> All my friends at KU are like, don't get the accent, David. That is not Kansian accent. I draw my A's and cut off my participles, so that's, that's my Kansas. All right, well, let's, let's all gather back together here. And uh, I would like, uh, would someone, and Jamie, this is where I'm going to need your help with the mic, please. Uh, so would someone like to introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to accomplish from their website? Raise your hand. There's no wrong, there we go, there we go. Yay, brave soul, brave soul. You got it. I would like to do two things. One is the obvious thing that I think a lot of us want to do is to have people call us so we want that call to action. Uh, but I want to go into um, distributing digital um, content, both in a written form and as a video, uh, and, and basically uh, uh, train clients um, to, to do certain things and basically. <laughs> like to sell part of the digital projects that I would like to do and I have done is to create uh, use forms to create uh, Google Docs and PDF files to be distributed to clients on the return and I use Make to do that. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. All right, next next up, thank you very much. Wait in the back there, who's next? The red shirt? Thank you. And your name is important, right? Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Kevin Hemphill. Um, I'm over web development for Red Cube Creative um, in Carrollton, Georgia, which is a full service media solution company. So we do photo, video, graphic design, and um, a little bit of digital marketing. Um, so for me, um, this is more about um, learning to make sure that we are uh, helping our, that we are prepping our clients' websites to be technically um, ready for SEO um, to basically, because we work with so many different industries and areas, um, understanding a little bit more about how we can do better in helping their content, helping the technical aspects um, of SEO and getting them, not necessarily, I guess not saying fully SEO ready, but SEO technically ready, and then helping them be prepared to go on to uh, do the SEO either themselves or through a digital marketing company. So. Okay, thank you, thank you. Next, Beth, you want you sure you sure you want me to? You? Uh, be nice, David. Being, oh, I'm supposed to be nice to Beth too. Okay. Uh, okay. Clarifying what we're supposed to be answering in this question right now. Are we supposed to be answering what I want my visitors? To what do you want your visitors to your website to do? Okay, so besides the WP Project Managers Academy, I have my agency, which is Triad Web Advisors. Sure. And I've just pivoted what I do. So I created a self-assessment that people can answer some questions if they're having issues with their website, if they want to know what their website health is, so to speak. And so when they land on my site, I want them to complete that because that puts them in my funnel. Okay, okay, great, great. Yeah, next up, thank you. Jen Wolverton. I'm an online math teacher and I'm at Log Cabin Schoolhouse and I have a very specific goal. I have about, I'm only one person business and I have about 50 seats in math classes because I'm the only math teacher so I can only teach. I have a ceiling. Um, I have about 26 students currently and they're gifted kids. I can only teach so many of them but I um, talk um, a lot online on Facebook um, I can only talk in so many places because of the time capacity. Um, so I'm not as much on my face on my WordPress page as I would like to be. Um, so I need to get better at SEO and funneling my talk time in certain places. Um, but what I would like to do is get better at SEO, putting it in one place that would um, spit it out into many places um, and go 
go from 26 kids to my 50 capacity. Okay, okay, great, great, great. Now, did anybody find that we're going to, uh, thank you, Jamie, we'll, we'll take a break. Did anybody find this question hard to answer succinctly? I mean, I mean, I'm not, thank you all for being brave to stand up. Did, I mean, it's okay to say, yeah, this is a hard question to be succinct about, right? Because there's a lot, we have, we, we've spent money on websites and we have a lot of hope that that website will return. And so we put a lot of hopes into, and, and sometimes, especially for bootstrapping, we're like, oh boy, this, this thing gotta, gotta go. This thing's gotta go. Or we're in a very competitive space and we're like, oh yeah. So sometimes it's really hard to break this down simply. And so I think what's going to be valuable for us is we're going to break this down into three smaller questions. OK? And I would like you to think about one sentence that answers each of these questions. The first question is, what is your business objective? Notice it does not mention website in that question. Right? We're not talking about your website right now. What is your business objective? Would someone like to bravely answer their business objective in one sentence? All right. Jamie, could you go help her? I would say our objective is to get people to purchase our product. There you go. That's a one sentence answer. The business objective, website or not, is a purchase. Who else? Did you want to? Sure. Okay, come on. We, all right. You want to go help him first? and. Forget about website. What is your business objective in one sentence? My business objective is to sell thirty thousand dollars worth of art. Okay, selling art is the objective of your business, right? You you have a very specific goal of dollars. That's great. Great. I'm I'm kind of here like the guy in the red shirt for my customers, but um, oh, sorry, my. Objective is to help my customers sell mini golden beetle puppies. Okay. Selling puppies. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, please. We're going to give the mic to you. Um, I'm also kind of speaking on behalf of a customer. Yeah. Um, but their goal is to reach as many schools in the nation as possible to share STEM outreach programs. Okay, so their business objective is reaching. <laughs> how, how does reaching allow them to make money to sustain their business? They're a nonprofit that are funded by grants, so everything is free. Okay. So they're not selling per se, they want to have metrics to give back to the grant people. I okay, guess. okay. They want, so, they want yeah. grant money. What does reach mean? That's a good question. Okay, okay. <laughs> if, if, if I find their website, have they reached me? Is that their goal? We want you to engage in the website. So, if I click on a couple pages on their website, is that what the goal is? We want you to be a part of how do I become part of the program? By signing up. Okay, there you go, there you go. The business objective is to get more participants, to people to sign up for the program, right? And this, this is a real, I'm, I'm not picking on you, I hope, I hope. But this, this is a very common thing, right? We think, oh, I wanna reach. And, and frankly, this is like Facebook and even Google will, will seduce you by these impression numbers, engagement numbers. Ooh. But, but like who cares? Except if those are getting people to engage your content. But, but who cares if people are engaging your content if none of them ever sign up for this wonderful program, right? So the business objective is to get people to sign up. 
right? And frankly, that's true whether you have a website or not, right? That's what the objective of the business is, okay? Jamie, this gentleman has one more question real quick. You didn't wear your walking shoes today. Jamie is my content manager, so Jamie lives in this all day. That, so, yeah, so the point I'm trying to get at here is there is an objective. Sometimes the objective doesn't immediately happen, but we're just talking about what is the ultimate goal. If it was church, the goal is butts and seats, if we're going to be frank about it, right? That, because then, then the opportunities can happen to minister to these people, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yes, it might be a journey to get there, but there is an ultimate, at risk of being sacrilegious, a business objective for that church, or for this nonprofit, or, or for someone who's providing leberdoodles, right? Golden, golden doodles, <laughs> right? So they have a goal. Now, sometimes that's a long process, but, but there is an objective f f for that business. There is a reason for that entity to exist, right? That's all we're talking about right here. One last thing. Okay, how, how would someone streamline their ticketing system? Well, it's either usability issues, either they cannot handle the um, spike in traffic. Um, so what we do is we um, refine their ticketing system or um, set up servers that Okay, so that's how you do it, but the objective of your business. There you go. There, that's that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. But we 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 want to have a simple, right? We don't want to keep going. There you go. There, hire us. That, that that's really what we're looking for. I, I, please, I'm, I hope I'm not picking on anybody here, right? Because these are common things we all struggle with. You know, there's a lot of things we want. I just want us to pause for a moment and say we have a, a business, whether that business is a nonprofit business, you know, or a financially income, or we are the business. We have an objective. That objective relates to income, right? We we sell spaces on our math class. We get more people to sign up for our nonprofit program. That translates into income because then we get better grants, right? So really. None of us are in business out of the goodness of our hearts. We, well, I hope you love what you do, but we got mortgages to pay. And the mortgage company, last I checked, does not take my good intentions. <laughs> right? So we got we to remember this. And, and you just forget about websites. What is our business objective? The second question, the second question after we identify our business objective is what does our website do to accomplish that? Right? One sentence, how does your website accomplish your business objective? And yes, it's going to be OK. We're working through this together. There's going to be, it's good. I'm asking for brave people like you to, to be willing to yeah, say it in front of everybody. Good, please. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Jazz. This is a little odd because I didn't answer the first one. That's all right. There you go. There you go. Right? Because if you inform me, yeah. great. I'll go somewhere else. I'll hire Jamie to do it. Right? <laughs> right? Because I'm informed. Right. right? But you don't want to just inform me. 
you want me to contact you, right? But you said it exactly right. There's a contact button on the page, right? That is what your website accomplishes. If I push that button to hire you, that's what you want your website to do to contribute to your overall business goal, right? Great. So contact button, perfect answer. Great. What? How else does your you want to you want to go again? Are you sure? It's different. Oh, it's different now. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, okay, ask a question. I wonder if anyone else has ever tried this idea. I, I want to try this idea, and I'm not sure. Um, I have an LMS that I've just put on my website, and I have a lot of kids that are homeschooled that don't like paying for math classes. Um, but I do get a lot of private school kids that will pay for my math classes, but I'd like to serve my homeschool students as well. Um, so what I'd like to do is use my LMS, um, make videos of myself teaching, put them on my YouTube channel, make the, the videos free, um, and then put them through the LMS where they would go to my um, website, watch the videos through the LMS, they would be trained through the LMS, but then they would funnel the videos through the YouTube channel, and then I would be paid through the YouTube views. Okay. Anyone tried that before, and is it potentially okay. lucrative idea? So, that's an interesting strategy. Interesting strategy. Okay, very interesting strategy, but what we're, we're talking about right now is how, what our business objective is and what our website's going to do to accomplish that. That's a marketing strategy. That's a good one. That's not the same thing. We're, we're out, like, remember, SEO is about helping people find us in search engines. You've developed a, a marketing strategy. Okay. That might be great, but before we get to the marketing strategy, we've got to know what the goal of that strategy is. Right, we. It's a, problem. It's, a, it's a great. It might be the perfect strategy, right? You, yeah, but but this. I'm glad you're saying this because sometimes what we do is we get the cart ahead of the horse, right? And we're not really clear on what it is our business objective and what our website's going to do to accomplish that, right? So we've got to make sure we get this together, and then from that. We can develop a strategy to accomplish that, right? So, but that, I'm glad you said it for that reason. Okay, so I want to keep going. Once, I'm going to keep going if you don't mind. Okay, um, so we have an objective for our business, which is to be able to pay our mortgage on good intentions, right? No, we, we have to have income somehow. Sometimes it's selling, sometimes it's contacting, sometimes it's getting enough subscribers to get funded. Like, there's, there's, a, there's an objective to our business. Our website can accomplish that, right? Maybe it's filling out a form to contact us. Maybe it's purchasing a product straight off of our website, right? Maybe we're the New York Times. We kind of don't want people to contact us. We don't have a product to sell, but we need people to view ads, right? I hate to break it to you, the New York Times makes money when people see their ads, right? That's their business objective is to make money to sustain the newspaper, and they do that by people clicking ads. So that's their way of using their business model to accomplish something. And then the third. And I'd say the most important part of that is measure it. Okay? There are a bunch of people. How many have Google Analytics installed on your website right now? Raise your hand. Or, or maybe it's not Google Analytics, maybe you're using another analytics product. All right, so you know, a lot of us, right? The, the missing piece. Of, of this sometimes is only measuring things like traffic to site, number of users who visit your website. And if you go into Google Analytics, there's a ton of data there. Number of pages viewed, bounce rates, engagement rates, engaged sessions. These are wonderful little metrics that Google provides us. But none of them accomplish our business objectives in a way we can measure them. 
what we really need is to be able to measure the thing that our website does to accomplish our business objectives. I've had multi-million dollar publicly traded clients say, David, I want you to improve our bounce rate. <coughs> wow. How much money do you make from an improved bounce rate? Well, you know, we know that if less people bounce, there's going to be more engaged time on the site. And I said, so now you're selling ads? Because if you're selling ads, you want more engaged time on the site so people see more ads. Like, no, 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 we want people to call us. Oh, right? So they're actually using the data in Google Analytics incorrectly to say, oh, because they don't have a clear way to say how many people called them. And so they use the other data because they didn't take the ad data in Google Analytics one step further to measure the specific thing on their website that accomplishes their business objective. Now, I will say, uh, sometimes people build websites and they say, well, it's, it's a brochure site. I'm, I, I hate that phrase. If you are a web developer, and you sell brochure sites, you're, you're, you're kind of doing an injustice to your client. But you're also doing an injustice to you as the web developer because then the website is a sunk cost. It is a cost of doing business. And so the next time you sell a website, you have to convince them to spend a few thousand dollars on another website because that's just the cost of doing business. Or you're, you're caught in a conversation about, well, you know, your website's out of date. You should really should replace your website every five years. And it's about the cost. But if you deliver a website to someone who, after understanding their business objectives, helps the website helps them achieve that because it's not a brochure. It has a contact form if they need leads. It has a WooCommerce solution if they sell something. It has a phone number prominently in tracked. Now, Ms. the web developers, you're not selling a sunk cost of, hey, it's just a cost of doing business in this world. You've got to spend a few thousand dollars on a website every year. Now you're giving them something that makes money. Because they know how many customers they've earned off their website. And so now if you are not a web developer but a business owner and you've got a website, now if you can track how many customers not just visited your website, not just engaged your content, but how many people filled out your contact form, called a phone number, now you know how much, you're closer to knowing how much money you've made from your website. And if you're able to do that calculation, I bet you, you can afford a better website because it's now a money-making endeavor. It is not just a sunk cost of doing business. So we need to be able to measure whatever our website accomplishes. So there are, to oversimplify, there are three ways that a website might accomplish your business objective. They might, oh, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. They might fill out a form, right? Anybody have a form on your website, right? right? They might call your phone number, right? A phone number on your website, right, right, right? They might buy something. Selling stuff on your website, right? Okay, we need to measure that. And, and here's what's really cool. If this is the last thing you do and you don't do anything more with SEO, now you'll be able to identify what marketing channels work. Right? Forget about SEO for a second. I'm, I'm, I'm talking in the SEO workshop and telling you, forget about SEO. I want you to know confidently how much you made from your website. So when that slick, Facebook ad guy that you called because he's got a little sign on the side of the road, call my number and I'll do your Facebook ads. 
he, you know when it's working or not. Right? For the big, big marketing budget company that you spend thousands of dollars a month on, you know if it's working or not. Don't spend a dime on marketing for anybody if you don't know if it's making money for you. Don't hire me if I'm not making money for you. And that includes your own time. Your time as a small business owner is worth a lot of money. So if we know how many things you're achieving that accomplish your business goals, now you know where to spend your time. I have a really good friend. Paul heard this story lately. He had hired someone to do social media for a year and a half. And he calculated he spent 14 grand on social media. Thankfully, he had it all set up. And unfortunately, a year and a half later, he realized goose egg from it, right? Now, what does that mean? Does that mean a social media manager sucks? I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's other factors. Maybe they were doing the wrong tactics. Maybe it's not right for his market. But the question of, that he's asking is the right question. You know, hopefully, we find out later than earlier. You know, we go to BNI, we go to networking events, and we hear, oh, Snapchat's the cool new thing, or TikTok it, and da -ba -da -ba, everybody's doing this. You don't have to believe the latest rumor. You should know if it works or not. And that's why this is like so important. And that's why we're not really talking about SEO yet, because I really want you to have this set up before you do any marketing. Right? And if you're a web developer, I know your clients don't even care about analytics. Right? Half the time your clients just don't even install it. I'm not going to look at it. If you're developing a website for someone and you want them to know the value you've given them as their developer, install it for them. Let them see what's working. Let them see that you didn't just charge them for the website, but you're an active part of their marketing. Let them see what's working and what's not. Make this part of your web development process. All right, so in Google Analytics 4, um, we actually, it's pretty easy to set up conversions to track how, some, how our website has achieved our business goals. In GA4, which is what I'm recommending you install, install a SiteKit plugin. You can all install a plugin, follow the wizard, install Google Analytics. You create what's called an event. An event is something that someone does when they are on your website. Um, I'm going to give you the slides to this later so you don't have to write this down. But you just go in and you create an event. You don't have to code this. You go and you say, hey, Google, I want you to listen for the next time someone pushes the form submit button. Hey, Google, I want you to listen for the next time someone clicks to call. Right? Google, I want you to listen for the next time someone makes a purchase on my website. And I want you to consider that a separate event on the website. And that's how you do that. So for example, you can do web form submissions. It's pretty easy. I'll give you this later so you don't have to read it all. But you just have to follow some best practices here. You know, We just build this out. We say, hey, Google, this is a separate event. Someone pushes this button. This is called a form submission. And uh, we want you to treat this as, it's if, as if it's a conversion. So when you tell Google Analytics that this is a conversion, it treats the event different. And you could go into your other reports and say, hey, I want to know how many of these events occurred. And from what source of website traffic, what source of marketing channel, did it come from Facebook, did it come from Google, did it come from Snapchat, or I don't know, whatever. Like you will know this. So 
one thing you might do is, is track your web forms. Um, in the presentation, you can have this, uh, but that's what you will basically be setting up. You don't have to code this. This is really not scary. If you use WordPress, copy paste, easy done. So phone calls are a super underrated call to action. Um, I think most of us have our phone number on our website. Um, that is great, but if, if people call and we don't know how they found us, we're not able to track and measure how many phone calls we've received. Now there are solutions that you have to pay for, like CallRail I really like, another one called What Converts, it's really good, that will have a very sophisticated, complicated way of tracking phone calls off your website. If you've got the budget, that's worth it. I've, I've seen companies, companies tell me, nobody calls us for business. We set up phone call tracking, Dow Chemical called you for business, right? That is not a cheap lead. That I paid for my SEO budget for a couple years with that one phone call, right? But they want, I want them to know that because I want them to know this is not just a sunk cost. We're paying David to do our SEO. This is something that's making them money. But if you don't have, you might not deal with Dow Chemical or large companies, you, you can simply make sure that your phone number is click to call. You know the feature, like you click on it. If that is a, a click to call, you can set that up and tell, hey, Google, anytime someone clicks the phone number, I want you to treat that as if it's a conversion. Right? You don't have to invest in fancy stuff. And you just use this to fill it out. You're just filling it out, right? This is one of the advantages. If you're using universal analytics, the older version of analytics, you used to have to do JavaScript programming. It's a pain in the butt. This is an advantage of GA4. You're just telling Google what to listen for, and it will track it as a conversion. If you're doing e-commerce, sorry, it's not a simple answer. Um, with e-commerce, WooCommerce, since we're in a WordPress event, does have the ability to send e-commerce data into Google Analytics. So now you know how many products you sold, how much they sold for, and how they found you in the first place. Right? That's actually wonderful information to have. Because now you can really quantify, I spent $1,000 on Facebook ads. I made $5,000 in sales. I will make that trade all day long, every day if I can, right? That's what you, but you have to use the WooCommerce, Google Analytics for e-commerce tracking. I don't believe it's free. Someone may correct me on that. But it's not a sunk cost in doing business, right? This is a way for you to know how to make more. It might cost a little bit of money to pay WooCommerce to send the data to Google Analytics so you know how many sales you got, but that means you know what your marketing is working and you should continue to do, or what's not, and you should reevaluate and try something else, right? So don't think of this as oh, yet another expense. This is an investment in your business objective, right? So this is, oh, oh did I go back? What is that? What is that? Oh, I, that's a duplicate slide for some reason. I don't know what that is. All right. So once duplicate content, SEOs are so bad about that. That's terrible. Um, so after you've installed your analytics, Google Analytics is what I'm recommending. It's free. It's great. Now, you can set up a monthly report for yourself, right? Check it. Don't lose the forest for the trees. Every month, go in and say, what's working? And you now know work isn't time on site, bounce rate. Work is five people contacted me last month. That's three more than the previous month. And you know what marketing channel did that. And you know to give that person a raise. Now, to, to keep investing in that, right? 
So uh, that monthly report. Now, if I was a web development agency, I would send a monthly report to every one of my clients every month. Because I want them to see that the, the money they spent with me to build a website is paying back value. So the next time I pitch them, in two or three years, I've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that website made them money. And next time they won't quibble with me and buy the cheap website because they know how much it's making. If I'm a website owner, I want to know what is working, what is not. If it's not working, maybe you do need to hire someone to help you with it. Maybe Facebook ads is not working because you, you don't really understand it. And maybe you need to hire someone to do it. Maybe your SEO is working so well, you're, you're a business owner, now you're teaching math classes, you're not doing SEO, maybe then it's time to hire someone to do SEO. Right? So, so like, that's what this monthly report is all about. Take at least once a month, go back in your data and say, what's been working? And you know what work means. Uh, you've heard about CRO, or conversion rate optimization. You can't do CRO unless you have a conversion, right? We need, you know, we make sure on every page of our website, whatever our main call to action is, whatever the, the thing our website's doing to accomplish our business objective is prominent and straightforward and trackable, right? Please take your email address off your website. You want them to go through your form because you can track that, right? And once you have that data, then you can say, hmm, that blue button on my contact form, it sure blends in so well with my website that I don't think people are noticing it. I wonder if I change that to red, if I would get more conversions. You don't have to do that by inference. You can use data, right? And then there's the technical review, right? Simple things like, hey, how many times did someone visit a page that doesn't exist? What a terrible user experience. You know, you're messing with your site. You're taking pages on, picking things off. You can use Google Analytics to track that, fix that, make sure that people get to the right pages. Um, are there other technical issues? Is your site really slow? Uh, if you start, if you've done Google Search Console, which we haven't talked a lot about, you'll know is Google having a hard time reading any of the pages of your site? Is Google confused when it crawls your site? Is Google finding pages that you didn't even know existed? You're like, yes, I, it is. It, it's, it works too well sometimes. You'll know what to do, and then you can follow the documentation. Point is, is take the time to set up your analytics so you not only know what's making you money, but you then can keep doing the rest and continuing through our SEO process, okay? I would like, I've gone a little longer than I had hoped, so we're halfway through, and we haven't even talked about SEO yet, right? Be because this is so important to me. Like, I really want you to, to succeed in your business, succeed in the goals of your website, and so I hope, even if you leave me now because someone else is speaking and you like them more than me, then, like, I get it. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm leaving you in a better spot and inspiring you to go set this up. And you I can, a just a second. And then <laughs> at, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about the second number one, <laughs> and we're going to start doing SEO. One, uh, one number two. Uh, can you give Beth the, the mic? And then we're going to take a, a five-minute break for water because David needs to rest too. And Beth's going to ask us a real quick question. Okay, so if I'm setting up GA4 yep. to be triggered by clicking on a button, okay. but that button belongs to a third-party plugin like MemberPress, right. is that possible? Yes. Okay. So I, need, I, I don't need to know how. I just need to know how Yeah, it has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a little break. Please take uh, five minutes, get some water, get some snacks, use the restroom. We'll be back in a sec, okay? And please come back. <laughs> you're in the right place. Glad you're here. So we have been talking about 
everything but SEL. And I'm glad you came back. I feel a little less insecure now. Um, I had some great questions in the middle. Like, I, I'm so glad to hear you struggling with it. Um, like, literally, some of your questions in the meantime were like, this is where I live. You know, marketing departments who track bounce rates. And Oh, Lord. I, I'm really passionate about this, if you can't tell. All right. So let's go to number one, in the second number one. And we're going to talk about uh, the key to research. To do this, I'm going to need you to, uh, if, if you're abandoned at your table by yourself, I love you. <laughs> but please join a table with other friendly people, because this is where we're going to start talking about how your customers might search for you. And I, I, I'm, I can't tell you enough. We all use jargon because we're all experts in our field. But when you talk to someone who has no idea what your field is and they look at you and say, hmm, huh? that is a very valuable piece of information. OK? So we're going to talk about, we've talked about analytics, which is going to get us to the first two steps, or at least start it in the first two steps of SEO. We can measure it, and we can start to get some of the technical SEO problems to, to troubleshoot those. But now we're going to go to keyword research. And then we're going to, so that's going to help us tackle the second two things, which is content and links. Um, let us talk. Here's, here's my five step keyword research process. Pardon me. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to brainstorm. And you know, with any good brainstorming process, it's really important not to edit, but just to listen and think. Okay? Once we are done with the brainstorming process, we're going to clarify those a little bit more. We'll talk about that in a second. The funnest part to me, the most fun part, is the data. We don't have to guess how our customers might be looking for us. Google will actually tell us with numbers so we are not left to uh, assume. That's one of the best parts of this. Once we have data, we will organize this together. And that's where we're starting to do a little SEO. We're starting to say, oh, this page is, we're focusing on this and this page. And that's where you start to feel like, ooh, we're doing this. Man, it's no longer magic. It's, it's demystified. It's actually like marketing or something. Like, who knew? And then we're going to focus. All right, so here's what I want you to do with your table. Um, we've talked about who you are, and some of you are new. Okay, I'm inviting you. Okay, so some of you are new to the table. Welcome. What I'd like you to do is, is introduce yourself again. What, you, you have a business objective, great, because we've run through the first hour. One sentence of what you solve for your customers. Okay? What do you solve? What's the problem that you solve for them? Okay? Just talk amongst yourself. I've given you a topic. What is the problem that you solve for your customers? All right? I'll give you five. Aired view. Okay. Okay. So, um, mute, so just a little touch will turn it on. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you a little bit later. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. How's that go again?
that, that Maybe. you saw, one problem that you saw, <laughs> so, that like um, is something that like, so that's probably like what they have on their site. I've but, had like, it for like 14 to, years and we read it. As you say, but this, mm -hmm. this but is when the we problem go to index like, we solve for clients. So like Google Search Console is showing like 600 I help small pages not indexed. But they're not I say I do look less than nobody else because a lot of people are going to know what that is. And I don't really care that they're indexed. There you go. So I can look at that because, like, the 37 pages on their site are all indexed. So that's what I worry about. I don't look at this report right. and be like, I'm right. going to get value. You're, you're using the report exactly right. Okay. You know, it's, it's there to review to say, oh, is there something I wanted indexed in there? Oh, then you need to figure that out. But it's just telling you it's seeing things. Now, in more advanced SEO, we worry about crawl and the fact that it's crawling. It's wasting its time crawling things that you don't really care if it crawls. So we might prevent it from crawling some of that. It's more complicated than that. So I, I wouldn't recommend you go down that path. I think you're doing the right thing, especially the scale of the site you're talking. Um, just as long as there's nothing in there that you want Google to index, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. It's giving you data. You review it and say, yep, that's kind of what I expect. I don't care if it inde didn't index that image. Fine. Moving on. Right? But if, if a major landing page is in there of a major service that you provide, then, oh, yeah, no need to figure that one out. Right. But that, that's what the report's for. Yeah, I mean, they did so, it. Like, yeah, call, and sometimes it just takes time. Sometimes there's there's many factors behind that, but yeah, it's 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 hard to give an answer for why it happens. Sometimes it just takes time. But yeah, yeah. you're using that report right. You know, it's it's not. And in fact, Google just changed their interface to not make it sound like it's a terrible thing. It's more they just want you to know. What's up? All right, let me. All right. Oh, I got it. Okay, so I'm going to cut us a little bit shorter. And I would like I would like one daring volunteer to join the the firing squad. I mean, to to be willing to let us as your new marketing department to do keyword research, but, but I want to I want to make sure I pick one that I think is 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 kind of helpful as a case study. So if I'm going to ask for a couple of, you know, what is the what do you provide for your clients, and I'm going to pick right because sometimes we have some edge cases, and it's not really going to be helpful as a lesson to the whole way. So uh, let's we're going to oh well that's not my problem that's your problem. All right. No, it's probably this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's because I don't have any power. Oh. Oh, here's Dave. Dave, can you clarify exactly what you want me to say? What, what you're well, you raised your hand in answer to the question. Do you not know what you raised your hand for? The question, I think, was what do you provide for your clients? Do I make a good example for your keyword research? Program? Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, I don't have power to this for some reason. Okay, go on. Yeah. Okay. We provide. And how to get online better. Okay. Okay. Terrible example. Ter oh, it's terrible. No one cares about that. Oh, sorry. That's not true. I'm just joking. Did you want to try? Uh, All right. Now, this is our business. What, what, what is it? That's the problem you solve for your business, for your customers, oh, your customers. That's a little different than what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Well, then you're going to take that. All right. yeah. Aisha? These guys. I help <laughs> conscious leaders solve their diversity, equity, and inclusion issues within their business. Okay, okay, great, 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 great. Beth, you've been talking a lot today. Well, it's a, and, it's and you're going to give it to, over there. It's a workshop. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, I, um, shut up. Hey, um, hey. Hey, that's just a thing. You're still in time from everybody. Let's go. figure out what's not working with their website, whether it be uh, traffic or they don't have a privacy policy, uh, something's broken or, or not working, and then uh, I help devise a solution. 
Okay, oh, good. So move this woman over here. Wanted to give it a try. We pass that. Um, we have what might be the best plugin to purchase or not purchase or to integrate into your website based on use case scenarios and reviews. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, Tricia. Oh, I help agencies increase their recurring revenue. Okay, okay. You, you story branded that one. Yeah. <laughs> I help parents and children reduce math anxiety. Okay. Right. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, my company uh, generates websites for radio stations and okay. gives them a platform to generate more revenue. Okay. I think there's someone behind and there's someone up here. <laughs> it's going all the way around. Mine's totally uh, right. Software to provide entertainment or uh, decoration gives them inspiration. Oh. Gives them okay, okay. Somebody else? Okay. We're, yeah, we're the, there's one mic and it's going oh, around. It's, uh, we, it's fine. No, it's all right. We are, we are grateful for those legs. I help manage and design the website and kind of help with content creation for our clients. Okay. 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 Okay, great, great. I got gotcha, I got you. I was, I was confused because we were, thought we were talking about the other one, but no, we got. All right, one more up here. Last Can I one. Just say it loud. No, we we need it on the mic, and we need for transcription services, please. Yeah, here we go. This is another customer. We okay. offer industrial rail served warehouse space in the Indianapolis area. Okay, industrial warehouse space in Indianapolis. Okay. Rail served. These are all, I, I, I'm not evaluating your business. This one happens to be the easiest one as a case study. Is that okay? Okay. So this is not me saying your business sucks. It doesn't. So here's what we do. We pull up a cool little spreadsheet, all right? We shake it out and we say, uh, warehouse, right? You do warehouses. Okay. The business you're using and the problem you solve. Uh, this is a customer who has industrial warehouse. Okay. There we go. Um, they have industrial rail served warehouse space in Indianapolis. Okay. Industrial warehouse rail served mm -hmm. warehouse space in industrial. Uh, in, in Indianapolis. Okay, so warehouse. Some, a customer might search for a warehouse to find them, right? But not every warehouse, right? I can type industrial, oh. industrial warehouses, right? Right? What's a, um, what are some synonyms? And everybody, well, I, I don't want to run around for, uh, I, I, if you shout out a synonym, I will repeat it for the transcription service. What's a synonym of some of these words? What's another way of saying industrial or warehouse? Storage facility. OK. Commercial, storage. Now, if someone said something, facility. OK, what are some other synonyms of the words on this page? Industrial, commercial, warehouse, storage, facility. Help us. We're brainstorming here. There's no right or wrong answer. What are some synonyms? Business. Uh, OK, huh? we've got business, right, building is a facility, right? What were, I'm sorry, we saw some others? Complex. Depot. Depot. Place. OK. What, anything, any other synonyms you can think of? Space. Space. 
factory under, under here? Factory under industrial business factory? Is that what you were thinking? Okay, a synonym of that. What are some others? Oh, you're not? Okay. So what we're doing here is we're trying to ask, so we started with the idea, oh, yeah, manufacturing. There was something rail served, right? Logistics. So we started with the idea of a rail served industrial warehouse is what we started with, right? And we've kind of, we're, we're brainstorming. Stage one is to brainstorm and to think of what are some other ways someone would refer to these things. And we've, we were using a spreadsheet for a couple reasons. One is it kind of helps us silo and think of things like what are synonyms of industrial, like commercial, business, factory, manufacturing, right? Those are warehouse, or storage, right, might be great. Um, facility, I like this. We're, we're modifying this. We're, this is, uh, okay, so we're actually in, in this last column. Our first step was to brainstorm, right? We're just kind of going through what we think people might be looking for. But the second step is a little what we call clarify. So the, clear, the last column here, by adding the word facility or building or complex or depot or place or space, we're starting to, to clarify these things a little bit more. And that's the second step. We might even, even, and this is super important, Indianapolis, right? You're in Birmingham, this company can't help you because they don't have a warehouse in Birmingham. Their warehouse is in Indianapolis. Um, so we're just kind of creating this thing. So what I like to do as, as part of the brainstorming process, and we've already started the clarification process, there's this tool I like called Merge Words. It's free. And I copy. And I pay. Train? Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're exactly right. So we're going to put tra train. And then we're going to put here, and we're going to grab these. And we're going to put them in the second column. And we're going to go here, and we're going to grab these. Put these in the third column. And what this does is this combines them all together into one big interesting list. Rail served industrial warehouse, rail served industrial storage, rail served commercial warehouse, rail served, right? We just combine these all into all several permutations of this word. Well, we can actually go a little bit further because we've actually clarified this. So, uh, so we're gonna put this list that was down here and we're going to modify it with the clarified words. And we're going to add here. Now, there's a little trick with um, um, what um, merge words. Uh, if you add an extra carriage return or space or return or whatever you want to call it, at the end, it'll actually give you all the permutations without that. So what, what this will allow us to do, uh, it's given us all permutations of these words, which were the combined permutations of our first three columns, right? Adding the next column, oh, we don't want this, I forget. Adding this next column, and we've because we've added a space here, it's going to give us w without those two. But there's an important, another clarity item, which is Indianapolis, right? Oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Indianapolis, OK? Now, I think Indianapolis is is pretty much crucial to this concept, right? You, if, if you're in Charlotte, sorry, you got to look for someone else. This is Indianapolis. That's an important part of this clarification process where people get off track when they do keyword research. They forget about the limitations of their business. And so sometimes they forget to mention where they are. Uh, sometimes 
uh, this is probably true with even like things like web dev companies. Technically, you can serve anywhere in the country or the world, but uh, you probably you might want to limit your area to your city, just because it's an easier way to reach people than it is to say I will serve anybody. You know, you're not going to show up necessarily for web development universally as easily as you might serve up for web development in Birmingham, for example. But here's a trick with we talk geography. Near me. Near me is a, kind of a special word when it comes to Google. Um, the word near me, Google for a while has been training people to use the word near me in some of their queries, people searching. It's so funny, my wife, when she searches for anything, she always puts near me at the end of it. Even if it's not necessarily matter, if you need to have it near you, she's, almost just, she's been trained by Google to automatically do this. Um, we want to put this in there in our keyword research because uh, Indianapolis, being a fairly large city, you might want something closer to one part of Indianapolis or a suburb of Indianapolis. Technically, you can serve. So we're, we're trying, what we're trying to do is determine, is there a geographical modifier that might be beyond Indianapolis? And we're putting the word near me in there. So, Anyway, we are going here, and we're going to merge now. We've got this number. So I'm going to copy these. We have now have 420 different. I'm just going to override these. OK. So some of our phrases. Rail served industrial warehouse facility Indianapolis. OK. Does that sound about right? for what your client does, right? Let's just go through here. Um, let's just kind of run down a couple. Train business warehouse place, Indianapolis. Mm, weird. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. We're done. Oh, we're kind of damn. All right. So these are just based on our brainstorming process. The next step, and this is, I call this past the brainstorming into clarity. We're going to literally enter this keyword into the Google. So there's this, this, this Google. When you do SEO professionally, you call it the Google. I didn't know if you knew this. Okay, there they are. There you go. They rank number one. All right, they're done. Yay. That's actually really good to know, right? We have hit on the idea of what they do. Rail serve warehouse for rent, Indianapolis is the title tag, and it's responding to that. But there's other things we want to get from this search result. People also ask, boy, we can't, it's hard to read those, I'm sorry, on this screen. People also ask, are questions that human beings have asked Google that Google thinks are related to the query we've entered in there. That's some really valuable information. Some of these are, I'll have to read them because I, I, I have to really get close. What was the first railroad in Indianapolis? OK, I don't know. Some but people want to know. What is Indianapolis rail served? Warehouse. OK, interesting. What active railroads are in Indiana? When did trains come to Indiana? OK, <laughs> these questions, in this case, probably aren't really related to what this business has to do, right? But there might be one that would be really valuable, and that might be the what active railroads are in Indiana? If I need a rail served industrial warehouse in Indiana, that might be kind of, of interest to me. I, I might not care about the history of railroading in Indiana, but I might care about that. So we, we click on that, and what Google does for us is starts to infer additional questions based on what we clicked. Now it's added some more. Uh, 
What railroad does Bill Gates own? I don't know. Does Indianapolis have a train system? Yeah, that's interesting. So as I'm doing my keyword research, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to make a note of these. These kind of relevant questions. We're Googling these, some of these results. Oh, there's another thing that we want to look at at Google. We want to look at the search results. And this way we found out, hey, th this company is showing up. So we've learned something. It's relevant to the client, right? We, we, are, we are describing this in a way that Google thinks is relevant to the client's website. So we're on the right track, in other words. One of the other things we look at is the people also ask. Because we want to know what questions people might want to know about this topic. Another thing we want to look at is other websites. Who else is showing up for this? Are they competitors? This tells us a couple things. Number one, if we show up and our competitors don't, me, we have to really wonder if this really is relevant to us. Two, we want to know who else is competing with us because we might be able to have a benefit of looking into their marketing strategies to see what might be able to help ours. So we might keep track of some of these websites that are competitors. Another thing we might look at oh, right, we're on an infinite scroll at this point, right? So there was a thing that, uh, hey, oh, and forget about this little plugin. Let me turn you off. This is not a sales pitch. I don't pay for that. Anyway, so uh, what we want to do with our keyword brainstorm list is Google some of them, especially some weird ones, right? We want to just double check some of these weirder ones that we thought, hmm, that's kind of not. What was the one? Logistics industrial warehouse space near me. Oh, oh, I forgot something. Well, all right, we're going to do this. OK. So we're also getting something called auto-suggest here. When we start typing into Google, Google's going to suggest things that other people have also entered into Google. Another great way to get new <laughs> ideas for how potential customers, because again, these auto-suggests are coming from actual people. And that's what we're trying to do. SEO is connecting with our customers, trying to find us. So we happen to be in Birmingham, Alabama. So it is not a surprise that Near Me is giving us Birmingham results. This client is in Indianapolis. But we're still going to test Near Me, because what we want to see is when we enter near me, does Google respond to that phrase and give, uh, let's see, it wants to know if where we are, right? It's treating us different. We want to see, does this generate local results? I guarantee you, on any of these pages, the words near and me don't appear, right? We're not keyword stuffing near me in the page to rank for near me. Google's smarter than that. It knows what near me means. And so what we're trying to say is, here we go, our Birmingham, Alabama warehouse for lease at a particular address. OK, OK. So I think near me, this is telling us near me is probably a good way to think about it. And, and so if someone's in Indianapolis and searching for near me, ideally they might be able to find this too, right? But in, the way it would work, in Indianapolis is by incorporating the words in Indianapolis, they might be found for someone searching for near me, just like this top result is, is being served for Birmingham, even though the words not near me are not on the page, right? But what we want to do with these other phrase, logistics, is we're testing this out. Is this relevant to what our client does, again, right? Are there additional competitors? for us in this that we would like to compete against. 
on this page. Um, are there, oh, see, there's the Google My Business. Come to Trish's result. Uh, Trish is doing the, the Google My Business later this afternoon. Go, she'll tell you all about that. Um, oh, here we go. Related searches, another great source for keyword ideas. Okay, these are all Google telling you how people are searching for this kind of topic. So what we want to do, oh, running out of time, is we want to, oh, here we go. There we go. We want to brainstorm. We've kind of done that. We've clarified, and then we've modified it by things like facility or building, Indianapolis, near me. Now we want and use data to use data for our process. So we're going to go and we're going to say, uh, there it is. We're going to go to the top here. We, we really like this keyword, right? This was really relevant. So what we're going to do, there's any number of ways to get data associated with the phrases that someone might search for. But it's super important to have a data confirmation that Google is available, a, 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 some data to say people really are searching for this. Um, otherwise, we're just kind of inferring. One of the best places to do this is Google Trends, a free site. Uh, my favorite is Google Ads Keyword Planner, but you have to have an AdWords account in order to use that. I do not recommend you getting an AdWords account just to do it. You could also sign up for Bing Webmaster Tools. Believe it or not, there is another search engine. It's called Bing. I don't care about it, but its Webmaster Tools are really nice. Um, that will give you data for keywords you enter into. I don't really care if I can rank on Bing so much, right? But I do want their data to confirm whether or not other people use this word too, right? So I'm, I'm, we're going to use Google Trends today. And I'm going to simply paste this phrase into Google. OK. So nobody is searching for it. All right. All right. Well, there's some. No, no opportunities for Google there, right? No. Yeah. I know. Oh, I'm done? I'm done. Point is, use data, talk with me. Oh, oh, no, don't do that. Sorry. All right. We go through the data process. We would uh, then organize our words together, not to keywords, but to topics. And then we'd focus those topics to know what pages we need on our website in order to start to optimize things. So this is the quick one. After we get our keywords, then we can begin to optimize, because now we know what to optimize for. We have, already have some blog topics to write. That's what the people also ask gets us, right? Uh, we can start to think about how we would get other websites to link to us, because now we know what we're trying to refer to. We know who's relevant, right? And so now we've talked about all the elements of SEO, from measuring to technical to content and links. And OK, so because we just totally flashed to the end of this, CuriousAnce.com, WSC, y'all, because I got the hashtag wrong. It's, it should be WC, y'all, to get to mine, not WP, y'all. And I totally made it confusing by even saying that out loud. In here, you will find several things. Number one, the entire key research process is available to you for free in videos that I've recorded and written documentations because we've rushed through it today. I'm so sorry. I got excited about it. It's all there for free. Just sign up for free on Curious Ants, and you get all the keyword research process for free. Two, we're doing a Google Analytics study group starting next Monday, not tomorrow, the 12th. If you want to get deeper in analytics, join the study group, learn analytics with us, and I got a special deal for you with CuriousAnts.com if you'd like to sign up for the whole program. Sorry to do that. Cut this so short. Sorry, Nathan, that I'm going on too long. Obviously, I love this. I'll be around all day if you want to talk about it some more. Thank you for coming to this really rushed webinar. Did you all enjoy, David? Let's give him another hand.
coming up in this room and this room.